Hi, howdy ho, salutations and shalom. Just gonna message my Twitter folk that I'm alive in case anyone wants to pop on over. This is, this is turning exactly into my YouTube lives. I am no better there. <laughs> Except we won't have to pause to check audio. I should actually, I don't know if there's any way for me to check audio. So we'll just hope for the best. There's, there's no reason why my audio shouldn't be working here. Now I've stressed myself out for literally no reason. Hi, long time no chat. I'm tired, <laughs> how are you? Like I went to bed last night and I was like, oh my God. I'm gonna set my alarm super late. I'm gonna have like nine hours of sleep and I'm gonna feel great. Woke up exhausted still. Took a nap. The nap wasn't even satisfying. Oh my god. It was not, it was not, it was muy no bueno. Muy no bueno. How are you? How are you? Thank you. I appreciate you solving this mystery for me. I would be stressed about it literally the whole time. I am quite the little ball of anxiety. <laughs> Why is it a one day free trial? Don't they usually give you like at least a week? Interesting. But also, are you sore? <laughs> I, are you sore? Oh my god. I can do it again. Uh, I would be super anxious the whole time. For one. For two, I, I get so just uncomfortable. I just, I'm not as comfortable in a gym as I am like in my own home, would you? Makes sense. Oh, mm, good luck. Same. <laughs> I've not been working out as much as I used to recently, and I that's that's a problem, and I should definitely get back to it. But you know, I, God, I really want to get one of those like resistance band things so I can do like not weights, but uh, like workouts with those like masses you know you know, do you know what i mean because the, the resistance bands are like uh 10 pounds 50 pounds worth of resistance and stuff like that and, like that'd be nice that'd be nice my whole computer's freaking out ah uh, yeah i i i really need to get back into working out too but today i am gonna try and read through some of my book the Queen of Thieves, A New Throne. We are going to read parts of the first chapter, which I, which I, I, I genuinely just sat down and read through last night because I was, I, I, you know, I definitely, definitely, like, think extremely highly of myself as a writer. Oh my god, I could, I, I'm, I have no idea if I'm as strong as I used to be, because yeah, I used to be a cheerleader, so I used to be physically picking up people, and I do work out, and I do work out in probably a better, oh, uh, why are you blue? Calm down. I do work out in a, like, more effective way than I used to, but, like, could I pick up a whole ass human being now? I have no idea. But yeah, I want to try and read part of the first chapter of this book. Which, this is the new cover, by the way. We have this. Uh, I, I spent so much time and effort designing these new covers, and I'm in love with them. But, I don't know, I just felt like I def I probably don't talk about these books nearly as much as I should be, given the, uh, given, given how much time and effort I put into the series. Mm. It happens. <laughs> it happens. 
the Queen of Thieves series, the general description I give is, is about a teenage girl, Afro-Latina, who is depressed and agrees to work with the government that ruined her life. And the actual blurb of the book, I... I've always in my life grown up with this being referred to as a blurb. I like like author Twitter, book Twitter and all that shit confuses me. <laughs> so we're still referring to this to as, to this as a blurb. The little call out is losing these situations always seem less complicated when you're not in them. And then the blurb, two teens meet at school and it seems like love at first sight. Carrie Williams, the suicidal new girl that's always the smartest in the room. C.J. Castle, a lonely and depressed boy that's been beaten down at school and home. He never dreamed that he'd find love in his life, but now he has someone he'd move heaven and earth for. The only problem is, Carrie's real name is Dallas Ryder, and stealing C.J.'s heart is her golden ticket into the home of his black market arms stealing father. For Dallas, the money definitely outweigh the one, but it still hurts to know he might not make it out of this alive. Ugh. We love it. We love it. We love it. So, we are starting from the beginning of chapter one. Not the beginning of chapter one. My bad, I lied. We are starting from only a couple pages into chapter one. It's not, it's not super far into it, so you're not missing a ton. And the only thing to know is that we are kind of, uh, why, why would you pay a hundred dollars for gym membership? That's that's gross. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, at this point in the book, we are starting, like, not in the middle of anything. Like, we are not going to get to this part of the book. But we are starting at some introductory shenanigans, kind of get, get, it, get used to the idea of who Dallas and Ethan are, what they do. Dallas and Ethan, by the way, Dallas Ryder is our main character. The Press Afro Latina, all of that. Ethan is her best friend, basically her brother. And we are going to see some of the shenanigans they get up to at, in the beginning of their junior year of high school. Okay. Dallas and Ethan walked through the lobby of the New York Citadel and made their way to the ballroom where they were stopped by a big brownie man at the entrance. Identification, the man demanded. Dallas reached into her clutch purse and handed the man two cards. His stern look turned to a nervous smile as he handed them back and gestured for them to enter. Once inside, Dallas grabbed a glass of wine from the nearest waiter and led Ethan to a group of men. Good evening, gentlemen, Dallas said as she pulled her shimmering black shawl closer to her. I'm Cassandra Monet, and this is my husband, Michael. The group rushed to offer them hands to shake. I think I can speak for the entire liberal arts community when I say thank you for all of your funding. I'm sure you'd love to hear all about how your contributions have helped the literary magazine flourish. Ethan smiled at them. We have all night to talk shop. Right now, we're going to give out a few more handshakes. See you, fellas. After about ten minutes of introductions and kissing cheeks, Ethan slipped out of the room. Dallas quickly downed a few glasses of wine before making a sloppy attempt to sneak through one of the roped-off halls. She'd only made it around the corner when someone ran up behind her. What are you doing? A guard asked, gun drawn. Dallas screamed, turning so he could see the tears streaming down her face. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, ma'am. He quickly put his gun away. Are you okay? I think my husband's cheating on me. Oh, who am I kidding? Of course he is. He's cheating on me, right? Ma'am, I'm sure your husband loves if the next the next words out of your mouth had better be bottle blondes. At the corner of her eye, Dallas saw another man around the corner. You good in your booker? He asked the man she'd been talking to. Yeah, John, you can go back. No. Dallas grabbed the new man's arms and dragged him over. I could use as many opinions as possible. Now be honest. You think I'm pretty? Dallas grabbed a glass from her purse and made a show of chugging the water inside for the six guards she'd gathered in front of her. I don't know what you're all complaining about, Dallas slurred. You all pointed your guns at me and not a single one of you had the decency to shoot. Forget it. You're all useless. Is there anyone else that can help me? John shook his head. You need the guards on duty or they're watching the security feed or standing at the front entrance. They won't leave unless someone releases them. I can go. That's okay. You know... You are really attractive, and this hallway is pretty secluded. She reached into the slit of her dress. Anything could happen. 
Before any of them could react, she pulled out a gun and shot out. The men wobbled for a moment, then one by one, they collapsed to the ground, darts sticking out of their necks. Dallas reached for a black metallic watch on her wrist. With a click of a button, she opened the microphone line for the radio hidden in her right ear. How you doing? I'm heading back now, Ethan replied through her earpiece. Dallas stumbled back into the ballroom and made her way to the stage. Before she could get to the mics, a middle-aged man ran up and stopped her. Miss Monet, whatever you're about to do, I don't think it's a good idea. Dallas shook her head. Dean, I just want to make a quick announcement. With all of the funding I provide this school, you can let me have this. Hesitantly, he stepped back and let Dallas grab the mic. Everybody gather around. She pointed at the guard standing at the entrance. Come here, honey. He froze. Oh, don't worry. I only bite a little bit. As the group laughed, he shuffled up to the stage. Everyone give it up for... Robert. Robert! Small applause followed. Robert, Dallas began. I really appreciate what you do here. Locking the entrance, keeping the thresholds safe. I mean, look at that doorway. A series of shots went off at the door. Everyone turned to see Ethan holding up the bag. Before the guard could do anything, Dallas shot him in the arm and watched him drop like a rock. She grinned. Single file line at my associate. We want everything. Jewelry, purses, wallets, even ties and cufflinks. You and what army? I've got guns. What do you have? Dallas taunted. She'd never shoot, the dean said before falling to the ground. It's just a dart. I just wanted him to shut up while sparing the faint of heart. She bent over and took the weapon off the incapacitated guard. Do you think his guns is forgiving? Dallas watched as the crowd lined up at Ethan. They were taking prizes from the last few people when Dallas's watch vibrated. She rushed to Ethan's side. Cops are almost here. Use me out the back. I'll draw them to the front. As he left, Dallas grabbed one of her knives, hid it behind her back, and walked through the lobby of the Citadel to the front door. Put your hands up! Don't shoot! Dallas ordered, doing as they had asked. I only have a knife. Oh my god, thank you. I tried. I definitely had to practice because I suck at reading aloud. <laughs> Put it on the ground, slowly. I can meet you halfway. She pushed the trigger and threw it a few feet in front of them. When the explosion went off, she ducked to avoid fire and ran through an alley a few buildings over. Under the cover of the shadows, Dallas slowed her pace to a walk and turned on a mic. Regroup at meetup. Hey! Dallas turned to see a six-foot guard with a swollen bump on his neck. He was laying against the wall, clearly not fully recovered from the sleeping agent in the dart. You're under arrest. Thank you. She pulled out another knife, dodging a flurry of sloppy shots when a blonde boy, slightly taller than herself, walked from a side street into the crossfire. Is this your husband? The guard slurred as he pointed the gun at him. Dallas broke into his friend. When she got to the boy, she threw the knife in the air and pulled them both the way he'd come. Shortly after, a small explosion echoed down the hall alleyway. Dallas made sure the guard was unconscious before glaring at the boy. Next time you hear gunshots, don't walk into them. Got a kid? No. He grabbed her arms, twisted them behind her back, and slid handcuffs over her wrists. Dallas Ryder, we need to talk. Dallas stopped resisting, but not before she could push a few buttons on her watch. Whatever you say. Dallas sat across from the blonde boy in a clean-cut interrogation room, her silky red gown shoved into a steel chair. So you're Dallas Ryder, he sighed. The one and only. How'd you find me? You're getting sloppy. What'd you do with the real Cassandra Monet? Sloppy, please. It's more likely you jumped at everything that came on a police scanner. And based on the fact that you won't look me in the eye and you're as red as a tomato, I'll take it I'm right. Dallas laughed hysterically. How many house fires have you gone to looking for me? I'll ask the questions here. Doubtful, but on the topic of the Monets, they're fine. They didn't even know about the banquet. My turn. What agency do you work for? You're not going to ask me my name first? I don't really care. He groaned. I'm Agent Jason Carter. I work for the Bureau for Covert Initiatives. Really? She challenged. You look more like a mat. What were you planning on doing with the things you stole tonight? I thought they'd make nice ornaments for the big tree they throw up at Rockefeller. He rolled his eyes. Tree ornaments? A fort? Dallas, do you know how many federal charges these sons have set you up against? Probably a few hundred, and you're not going to file a single one. Dallas relaxed in her seat. Behind her back, she pulled one of the crowns out of her watch, revealing a lockpick. Oh, and why is that? The handcuffs fell to the ground as she clasped her hands together on the table. Because you need me. Thus, I have the power here. Jason looked at her for a moment. Took you long enough with those cuffs. He turned to the laptop that he was taking notes on. Miss Ryder, you seem to be confused about how this works. If you don't do as I say, you're going straight to federal prison. And I know they won't appreciate those magic tricks there. The cuffs took me five seconds, thank you very much. And you're the confused one. If I don't like your offer, if I don't like your offer, I'll just leave. And how do you plan on doing that? Or your computer. He slid it over. Be my guest. I trust our security. She started typing. Oh, I'm sure it's great. The problem is, I'll always be better. 
The room went black. In a panic, Jason reached for his phone, but by the time he got the flashlight on, the door was wide open and Dallas was out of sight. She's out, locked on base, Jason hollered as he ran out of the room. Dallas stepped out from behind the door, slamming it closed as she went back to the computer to turn everything back on. Jason trudged back into the room. Okay, you win that one, but that doesn't prove you could have gotten out of here. Didn't it? He rolled his eyes. Do you want to see the case or not? Give me a second. Why? Ethan walked into the room and da tossed Dallas a bag of chips. How did he get in here? Jason asked, more annoyed than angry. Dallas smirked. Knowing your security, he probably just walked in. That is not even the full length of chapter one of the Queen of Thieves series. Big fan. Working on book four. Book three came out earlier this year. Working on book four so that can come out a little bit later this year. Big fun. Lo have not. Yay, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. It's definitely. This is. This is a very complex book. Not as not like high fantasy. <clears throat> that's not a word. High fantasy levels of like b world building complex. I mean, like we got tone complexity. We got jokes. We got chill vibes. We got bonding. But we also have so much trauma, and I love it. Book four is going to emotionally destroy people so if you're interested it's on these books are available on amazon.com the queen of these by brianna bond you should be able to find a link to them in my bio as well thank you so much for watching and have a nice day or night or whatever planets a circle so you, everything's out there i would love to there's just some i would love to record it as an audiobook but there are just some things like that I would I'd have to figure out how to signify specifically uh dream sequences as well as mental episodes that I would have to find a way how to signify that in an audiobook though like with a full audiobook situation I could always just add some effects that might fix figure out the tone while also like keeping it clear what's going on but and keeping clear the audio uh oh i feel that i feel that no we we, we understand but it's that the walkie talkies which i could probably do the exact same thing for the thing that's going to be the most complicated or the thing that's going to be the most complicated is this book is, these books all these books are multilingual and i have the actual as close as I could translate for most language. Spanish, I think, is pretty decent. The rest of them, whatever Google could help me with, I have those actual lines in there with the English translation set, like, set afterwards, it's a little smaller and stuff like Figuring out how that'll work, that's going to be a whole thing. I'm actually the exact opposite. I have a hard time, like, with processing images, and so mangas and graphic novels are so hard for me to, like, get to like it get through i'm trying to get try it again and see if maybe it was just the specific book i was reading but we'll see yeah i've, I've considered trying to record the video book i'm just not sure if i'd be good at it you know <laughs> i might i i can't remember off the top of my head if there's chinese but i i i, I may need help there, we, we cover a lot of bases in the series. But thank you so much for joining me to, to read this little section of this book. I appreciate it. And, yeah, I do want to read some more sections of some more books. I have, I have five books currently published. We have my poetry book, which that'll be easy to read from. We have my first book that I published, I Hear Colors, which we'll have the exact same like this is this is this is fonts in this book this book has so many different fonts and it's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> so that's also going to be a major issue trying to figure out how to make that apparent and then i have these two the first two this is book one and book two of the king of these and book three i will be getting a pretty copy up i just have my uh copy that i've like notated and stuff somewhere but yeah thank you so much 
have a have a nice day, night, whatever your time zone is, and I'll see you another time. Bye. Oh, I, do I even know how to exit? Oh.